I just wanted to address it. Vending machines make money. You can skip all the videos about how people made this little amount of money and they didn't want to keep doing it. Mm. Are vending machines profitable? I'm here to tell you, vending machines make money. That's it. But it's based on profit margin. That's it. It's based on margin. It's a margin game and it's a volume game. How do you solve for volume and margin at the same time? You find a location that has enough traffic to produce enough volume where the margins make sense. It's really that simple. If you find a location for your vending machine where people come along enough to buy at the price that you put it at, that's how you make your money. Some people have vending machines and locations where they go at the end of the week and they probably just broke even. Um, some people have vending machines in places where people don't want to pay the prices that they have in the vending machine. Some people have vending machines in a place where nobody buys from that vending machine. I've been someone who's had all those happen to me. But here's what I learned. Find a location before you place the vending machine. Find a location, get a vending machine, and then put it there. But the good thing about finding a location is you can pro prospect the location. You can look around, just like going to look for a house. You can look around. Okay, cool. This looks nice right now, but come back. See what the traffic is like. See what type of people are there. See if they even have snacks in their hand. You really have to do your due diligence. Um, and that's not with every location, but for the most part, to make money, with vending machines every time, you need a little bit of research. And it, again, it's only a little bit of research. Now, here's where the big debate comes in because some of these videos vary because people are using vending machines as a way to create content to, to gain a following. I strictly want to tell you about vending machines and making money, all right? So listen to me, anything over zero after you pay all your bills and expenses, is profit. Now, here's the thing, though. We don't want to just stop at zero. We don't want to just have $75 a week, but that is a start. And I think that a lot of people have to acknowledge that. You know what I'm saying? Um, the best part about vending machines is this is a low barrier to entry to really get your hands dirty and understand how to run a, run a business. You find a, 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 a you find a physical vending machine. You find a physical location. You buy physical products. You put them in the vending machine, and you see if people are going to buy it. It doesn't get any simpler than that. And for the most part, up to maybe five vending machines, you have full control. Everything is in within your power, right? So if snacks aren't doing well. You see that the snacks are doing well. So you're like, hey, let me try something else. Or if you see the location is not doing well, you're like, maybe try a new location. Or if you see that the price is too high, maybe manipulate the prices. You have full control, I think, at least up to five vending machines. And so if you're making 75, okay, not where you want to end, but it's a start. How do we get to 100 a week? How do we get to, if you're at 75 a month, how do you get to 100 a month, $150 a month? Because here's what nobody wants to admit. Starting a business is hard. Side hustles are hard. Some people are better marketers than other people, and some people have better locations than other people. And that's with every type of business. And that's how they make money. And here's the other thing. People are keep worrying about profit, 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 profit. Their mind is warped, though, right? Because if you work at Starbucks, if you work in um, a corporate entity, if you work at a startup, Every year, you get paid your salary for the job you do, right? Every month, every week, whatever your pay, pay schedule is. But when you look at that quarterly earnings report, that fiscal earnings year over year, sometimes they miss earnings. Not only sometimes do they miss earnings, they miss profit altogether for the year and the stock drops. But you're still employed and you still get your check. So when you think about the idea of making money in a company that's not profitable versus you actually having a company that's not making money, it just messes up your mind. And that's why so many of us who are really good in corporate America are stuck and struggle when we try to step outside of that framework and then go into business for ourselves. Because we'll see $75 as not a lot of money 
And there's there's literally companies worth millions of dollars, billions of dollars, um, hundreds of thousands of dollars that are not profitable. Now, these are two different things. So I don't want to create this parallel as if I don't understand that these big corporate entities with investors and everything are completely different from your small business because they are. But what I'm speaking to is the mindset, the mindset of understanding making money and becoming profitable is a long road unless you get it right, do the research, get it right, do the research, get it right, do the research. And that's what it takes. And part of research is time. <laughs> part of research is testing. Part of research is experience. So it may not always be something profitable. You got to get used to the idea of something uncomfortable or uh, not even lowered expectations, but missed expectations and then still pursuing them. You can make money with a vending machine. No different from making money with a t-shirt. If you think about it, let's say you take a t-shirt like this, you go to the mall, one of those little kiosks in the middle, and you put uh, whatever your brand is or whatever your quote is, right? So I would, my boring success, my boring success. Let's say I take that and in the kiosk, it's probably gonna cost 25 or $30, right? But if I have the right marketing or if I'm in the right location where people don't mind spending money, I could sell it for 40 or I could sell it for 50, right? Because that's what they do with clothes anyway. And so you may look and say, hey, I bought five T-shirts. I spent $20 to get them printed and total out the door cost for me is $25. So the five times 25, 125, I was able to sell them for 35. So I've only made a $10 profit on each shirt, I've only made $50. But do you know that's how most people start? And then they try to figure out how to make 50 into 100, and then 100 into 200, and then 200 into four, four to eight, eight to 16, 16 to 32. You get what I'm saying? So really what I want you to understand is the idea that <laughs> vending machines make money. And you just have to understand what type of money you're trying to make. And based on that type of money, you need to scout locations that you think can make that money. Don't go to a church and say, oh, man, I wish I could do like a thousand a month here. Maybe you can if it's a mega church. Right. Or maybe you can find a gym, not L.A. Fitness or 24 hour fitness or anything like that. Maybe you find a gym in your local community owned by someone in the area um, that's not a franchise because some of the franchises, they have to sell their own products too. So maybe you find a trainer or somebody who has their own gym and you put a vending machine in there. Then you know, hey, all I got to do is sell protein stuff, workout stuff, and you can mark up the price because they're there for that type of product and they spend that type of money on that product anyway. I think when I buy uh, the muscle milk in bulk, it's like $30 for I think maybe 18 or something. But if I'm at the, the gym and um, I don't feel like going all the way to 7-Eleven or I've already missed the grocery store, I'm here now and I want to go straight home after I work out or I want to go somewhere else after I work out and I don't have any uh, protein shakes at the place I'm going, I may just, I may just buy a <laughs> muscle milk and something else. And it may be seven, $8 when at home, I'm paying like a dollar and seventy-five cent per uh, drink, but I may spend seven, eight dollars buying a protein bar and muscle milk. So they're they're paying, they're charging me double or more than double what I would pay for something that's already in my house. But that's okay. Again, it's about traffic, it's about margins and volume, and it's about intention and attention on your vending machine. So if you have the intention right, then you have the right products, and then when the attention is on your vending machine, they'll buy. But that's all I really want to say. I really want y'all to understand that uh, you could choose something outside of vending machines. My boring success is really the idea of getting you to try these boring businesses because they've been making money hand over fist forever. Um, and they're right in our face. You know, right now we all see Grant Cardone and real estate boom. But before that, people were just buying homes. And 20, 30, 40 years later, yes, the value has be grown exponentially and they're selling their home or they're taking equity out and buying other homes. But that's it though. There, there was, there was no Grant Cardone 
on the internet with a thousand clips 20 years ago, 30 years ago. There was a Rich Dad, Poor Dad book and everybody didn't read that. Uh, so, and there was just no internet like that where people were teaching and coaching people on how to make money in different things. Now there's a lot of information. I'm not the only source. My boring success is not the only source, but there's so much information and opportunity that you have to try these things. And then when you think about boring businesses, most of these older people own them, but their kids, their kids have their head in their ASS so much that they don't want to inherit the business and take on the physical labor and work of it. Now, if you are a kid who whose parent has a business and you don't want to take on the physical labor, I completely understand because um, I'll use myself as an example. My dad, handyman, his dad, handyman more than he was, but me way less than them. I've never changed my own oil. I've never uh, just a lot of stuff my dad did that he was so busy doing and then so busy creating a life for us that he wanted us to live different from his own that he didn't really uh, pass certain things now, not because he didn't want to. It was just he was always busy working or doing the thing that, hey, I could I could I could change. The, I could teach you how to change the oil or I could just do this in my quick time and then get back to, you know, hanging with your mom and hanging with y'all for the weekend before I go off to work during a week and I'm consumed by my day job, right? So it's little things like that where I understand where these kids are, some of them, but some of these kids really have had the opportunity to work with their parents and they're taking on the business and they're making good money and a good change in these businesses. But a lot of us who are out here who don't have that parent or don't want to pursue that opportunity that our parents left us, there's other businesses where all you need to do is just get your hands in and do a little automation, just a little bit. Just a little um, improvement and you can make money. Vending machines is one of them. Okay, $75 for the week, $50 for the week. Let's do the math. That's like $200 a month, $300 a month. But dude, think about all the other stuff you've wasted time and money on that netted you nothing, right? This is a way to get involved in business, really learn and get hands on. And you can really make money. Having one vending machine, two vending machines is cool. But imagine if you said, all right, I got 10. 10 is what? Let's do the math. 10 at 75. Yeah, let's take my example. $75 a week, $100 a week. 10 is 1000 a week. That's how you get there. And some of the vending machines will make more than $100. Some will make less, but that's how you get there. 1000 a week, 52 weeks is $52,000, right? So it's a volume game. That's just like all these companies. When you think about it, you're a salesperson and then they got inside sales. They got outside sales. They got teams of 10 and 15. It's all about scale to bring in more volume. Apply what you know in the real world and what you live every day at these jobs. Apply it to your small business. I promise you, if you can just unpack that, you'll be able to sustain yourself and have a different mindset about what it is to make money with these small businesses and these vending machines. Because man, it don't sound like a big deal, but knowing that you yourself can control a hundred to a thousand to thousands of dollars to hundreds of dollars based off of you and yourself, it'll change your it'll change your life. It'll change the way you look at the world. It will even change the way you go to your work. You don't have to quit your job. Like going to your job <laughs> is completely different when you know that you're generating 20, 30 grand on the side, even if that doesn't even cover a, a inch of your salary. It's just different knowing that you know you can generate income, knowing that you know you're a producer in this economy and you can create ways to make yourself money. It changes your life. So yes, many machines make money. Yes, there's variations in a scale of what that money is, but you can influence and manipulate it to make more money. That's all I got to say. There's plenty of videos about how to get the money or how to make more money, how to automate, how to be creative, where to place it. If you've got questions about that type of stuff, leave a comment. But I just wanted to address it. Vending machines make money. You can skip all the videos about how people made this little amount of money and they didn't want to keep doing it. If you're in something to make money, this makes money. And you just have to do some work if you want to make more than what you're making. Peace.